What's up, everybody? This is Code from the Speaking Code podcast. Uh, I am going to be explaining to you guys what we're going to be talking about. You're about to listen to episode seven, part one. We talk about uh, uh, the trains, the train derailments, uh, the uh, Chinese balloons, and talk a little bit about the hazmat and hazardous material that actually uh, caused all of this stuff to happen in East Palestine, Ohio. Um, we talk about the mainstream media and how they're copycatting stuff and how everybody just they, – they just post the same stuff just a different day or different different uh, channel, I guess. Uh, we also talk about the 15-minute cities and what those are going to look like uh, and different explosions that happen along with the earthquake in Turkey that happened. Um, and I explained to uh, TBD who the Rat King was from the Ninja Turtles. So uh, enjoy the show. This is your midnight love host, Theodore Dinamite. I'd like to introduce you to Chente Zihome. Yo, yo, sounds like it's the Jagoff hour. <laughs> <laughs> and then we also have the man of the Jagoff hour. Oh, shit. Cold. I just woke up. <laughs> 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 oh, we're, we're off to a great start. It's good, already morning. Yeah. good morning. Good <laughs> morning. It's like the birds are chirping. I just open the door and then I take a big whiff and I just smell all the hazardous chemicals from East Palestine. You know what? <laughs> Singe in your nostril hairs. Like, hey, what's going on? It's like, are you vaping? It's like, no, I'm just breathing normal air. <laughs> normal Ohio air. You know, I remember once they said, you know, they might charge us to breathe. Yeah. And if things like this keep happening, we might get to that point. Yeah. Somebody said, what do you do about the carbon footprint? They're like, uh, what what can we do to, to to eat up all the carbon? And they're like, well, well, the, the trees do that. Yeah. <laughs> if we, maybe if we stop cutting down the trees yeah. and the rainforest. And they're like, yeah, hippie. What are you going to do? Plant more trees? Uh, it yeah. might help. It I might mean, help. We literally have. We've went and reforested places. Um, I know a couple places where schools have been knocked down. They put community gardens and parks where they planted trees and vegetables and different things. And they should have just built more houses. <laughs> uh, some of the areas, yes. Other areas, some like the park was the best thing you could have put there. <laughs> I, I hate to say that. I love this town we're in, but it's not always the best in certain spots. Yeah. So I've heard. Ooh. He's <laughs> never been south of the wall. You gotta come down here. A couple times. He's like the wildlings live down there. We're like, I've been chilling sometimes. You know, I've, I've seen the hot dog shot. <gasps> he saw the shooting there. No, I'm yeah. kidding. <laughs> hey, and it's safe because there's no train tracks there anymore. So, oh, they took them out. So we, we I mean, you say it's safe. It. <laughs> That's why it didn't happen here. Yeah, sorry. So you know, the gas station to go there. The I feel like you got you got you're risking it all for a fucking red Fanta and a chili dog. A chili willy. Wait, I don't know what the fuck's called. You guys drink red Fanta at the hot dog shop? Yeah, you know, that's the cherry drink. Yeah, you know what I get when I'm there? Root beer. Yeah, exactly. That's all you drink is root beer. <laughs> In this. Well, because <laughs> I asked you if you wanted it, and you're like, all right, I'll take it, I guess. I guess good. Because he didn't have a root beer. <laughs> I put root beer in it. He just doesn't know. Yep. <laughs> I masked it. Yep. With scent of banana. <laughs> the new fragrance for men. <laughs> <laughs> the speaking code fragrance for men. What if we just started our own fragrance? Now, anyway, I don't want to get too off track. Oh, we'll call it derailed. Mm. Oh. Too soon. Too soon? Okay. Too soon. Maybe, too maybe soon. Yeah, probably. It has like an acid burn. You're like, hmm, what's that scent? <laughs> Smells like mustard gas. It's burning my chest. And to those listening to our banter, uh, we're going to be talking about the, the train re- 
I said rerailments. Train derailments. <laughs> We're going to redo it. <laughs> redo it. Rewind. <laughs> Go again. Say it again. <laughs> We're going to do the train derailments. Talk about the train derailments that just happened beginning probably. of February? Yeah, July, it's probably been about January. Wow. Oh, um, maybe yeah. there was the drink was too strong. I'm sorry. I got to drive something. Oh, yep. But that's not, <laughs> that's not the only trail derailment. There was, what, like 24 just in the last two months? Something like that. And this is all, this episode's going to be mostly about current events. So that's what we're talking about. Planes, trains, and automobiles, and Chinese balloons. <laughs> we'll go from there. No, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it's crazy. They, I feel like in a way, and I, I don't, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong or I sound like an idiot, but <clears throat> I feel like when the news starts to, in the media starts to speak on something mm -hmm. and they just constantly push it doesn't matter what it is if they all line up and start pushing the exact same thing you start seeing the media pushing like copycatting each other talking about the same thing over and over again you know whether it's violence whether it's a police shooting whether it's a school shooting whether it's mm -hmm. it could be global war i mean it could be anything and everything but it could be numbers of some sort of people getting sick by a flu um, uh -huh. where it came from the same exact place as a balloon but one's racist one's not I'll let you decipher <laughs> the difference, but uh, supposedly, supposedly, um, with uh, the trains, they say, "Oh, these train derailments happen all the time," but we never heard about them. Yeah. Now all of a sudden, this one happens, and they're, like, "Yeah, we've been trying to get this stuff fixed for the longest time, and all this stuff." And then another train derailment, and it's not only just the normal train derailment; it's one with hazardous material. Mm -hmm. That supposedly, supposedly, they were supposed to have uh, so many cars. I think if it had 20 cars of hazardous material, the entire train had to be considered a hazardous, high flammable, like some sort of warning label on the train. Yeah. They have to drive at a specific speed. They have to almost have multiple people on the train to like help out and, and all this stuff. But this yeah. one only had like two people and a trainee on it. You want the trainee on a hazardous chemical? But I mean, either way, how many people do you need to drive a train? It's a train. It's not like it's not like a plane or like I mean, normally you would only have two people or maybe three people working on it. I mean, once you, it's not like you need somebody sifting in coal. Yeah, you know, it's, it's like, you know, it's not like yeah. they're they're doing that kind of stuff. I get your point, but like again, when like you said, we have hazardous chemicals, so there should be at least people. I don't know, like, if the car was completely full, but there should be at least people, you know, to well, make guess, sure there's, like, no spills. There should be, yeah. to make sure all the connections are right. There should at least be, like, emerge people, not at, if not each car, but, like, every other car. Well, it's not that, uh, well, the, so what you're thinking of is, like, a uh, train car where people could be on. These ones are, like, sealed. Okay. So, so imagine, like, you know, those big... Uh, shipping containers that they take off of boats. Okay, it's, it's like that. that. It's sealed. There's okay. no people going in them because gotcha. okay. you can't walk car to car to car. Okay. It's, it's almost like each one is like connected and then they so can shift and they stuff. They barreled up the chemical. I'm assuming barrels. Yeah, everything's and then in they these... put it in a sealed off container yes. that doesn't get opened or whatever. Until, until it gets... gets to... Yes. Gets... Okay. So gotcha. what ended up happening was they were like, did the brakes malfunction? And it was a, supposedly a bearing on one of the train wheels that broke and it caused the derailment okay. right so they kept saying well we've been trying to put in for these brakes to get fixed you know we've been asking regulations for these brakes but it wasn't a brake issue it was a bearing issue okay. that caused it now i don't know if that's caused every single one of these trains to have the exact same outcome but yeah. then they go oh not only did this thing fall in we need to do like instead of coming in and doing a cleanup we're going to go in and do a controlled burn so, so before before you go on, yeah. do can you give a little information on what was on board? What was the toxic chemical? It was some type of chloride. I can't remember exactly what it was. But it I think was, it was multiple. I'm not sure. Yeah. Vinyl, vinyl chloride. Yes, that's exactly uh, what it was. Vinyl chloride. Yeah. yeah. So that stuff is toxic. It not it decomposes only... into gases. It says when burned, it decomposes into gases that include hydrogen chloride and phosphogen. Whatever that is. Okay. So yes. they were trying to control burn something that turns into an even deadlier as a gas. 
Yes, and yeah. then it goes up into the sky, and then hence why we have all this rain. You know, the, acid rain, right? Yeah. yeah what, I mean, what did it? You start getting like you if you, you don't wash your car or whatever, like for a couple of days after this, you're gonna notice like the it's almost gonna look worse than pollen and dirt and soot on your. It'll look like you pretty much your car was by a fire. And it got all this uh, soot and stuff. Okay. And it's just sitting on your car, and you're like, "Why is my car this dirty?" You're like, "What the heck just happened?" And it'll be from all the chemicals that were paint. Was the paint corrode? Yeah, or some no? of the paints are corroding down towards East Palestine and stuff too. Oh, and wow. and I think a lot of people they're seeing on the news East Palestine, East Palestine, East Palestine, or East Palestine, whatever you want to call it. But they don't understand. They go, "Oh, it's just a small town. It's 20 minutes from Youngstown, Ohio. Youngstown, Ohio is what just a small town." Yeah, it's only two. So they're saying they're saying that that's just that's okay. Yeah, really. So four thousand seven hundred. Yeah, how that, much is that? That's a small. That's a small people, right? That's still four thousand seven hundred people. Yeah. Oh no, no, I'm, of course. But they're they're. I'm telling you, like on the media, they're mentioning it as it's just a small, small town. But they don't mention. Look at the population of Youngstown, Ohio. You know, look up. You're an hour and a half away, two hours away from. From uh, Columbus, Ohio, it doesn't mention that you're 45 minutes away from one of the bigger cities in Pennsylvania, Pittsburgh. You're 45. Wait, so minutes when they're burning this shit, and it's all going there. Yes. Yeah. And then it not, says, sorry. No, Go that's ahead. fine. So they don't they they keep pushing. It's a small town, right? You're 20 minutes from Youngstown, Ohio. You're an hour from Columbus. You're 45 minutes from P- Pittsburgh. You're 45 minutes from Cleveland. You know, you're you're probably like another hour or two from like a big city in West Virginia. Yeah. You know, like they they're like, oh, but it's just a small like not that they're saying it's just a small town, but they're only mentioning the small town. They're not mentioning all the bigger cities that are around it that, that are going to be affected by it. Yeah, and and not only that, but there was an area where people came, and this is where the conspiracy portion comes out. They mentioned that these uh. These people came to these this small town. They had like a bunch of different farms here, right? Yeah. They had cattle, they had chickens, they had animals, whatever. They said, "Hey, we want to uh, we want to buy your property and your your cows." And some of these people are like, "No way! Why would we sell our cows?" And they go, "Well, we'll either we'll either buy them from you now, or we'll, we'll get it at a cheaper price later." Kind of thing like and that. Now is later because no one wants a farm. Or well, the... well, not only that, they all but, died. but what? Yeah, they all died. All this cattle and all these chickens and stuff in these people's property. People let their dogs out that night, and their dogs just woke the next morning. They went out to like get their dog or something, or like they let their dog out at night, and then they went to go get it, and the dog drank water and died, or it was because just around the chemicals. The chemicals. That in it. Yeah, and it's like for some people, they're like, oh, but it's just a dog. It's just a chicken. It's just a cow. You know, like well, if but, I run a farm, that chicken is money. That cow yeah, is money. Or family. I mean, exactly. like people might not look at a chicken like I look at my dog, uh-huh. but some people do. Some people are like, "Well, I'm not eating my chicken. I'm just using it for eggs." Yeah. You know, like these are my these are these are like little buddies. You know, like they'll follow me around the yard or whatever the case, yeah. and they could last a while. You could have them for a long time. So, yeah. what people aren't understanding. Oh, so anyway. Now what happens is you have this derailment that goes on in this property area where all these people have these farms. It pollutes all the area. Now you're not you're pretty much creating a Chernobyl. They're not yeah. going to be able to farm. They're not going to be able to do anything with this land, and it's going to cause them to have to sell their land for way cheaper than what they would have got it for. And they're not getting money for the cows because they're dead. If they if they get anything at all. Yes, yes. Like who would want to move there? So I think what's going to happen- do the same thing during Katrina. When so many people, their houses were like irre- um, unlivable because of the the flood damage that they yeah. bought them from them for dirt cheap. They might bought have, their land they, and property. And probably didn't. They probably weren't able to use it like uh, like if some people weren't able to get like house insurance yeah. or like flood or, or hurricane insurance. Like, oh, this is the well, best. How much gonna buy this? How much they gonna buy it for? Like a thousand bucks? It's nothing. Yeah, well, who really? knows? I mean, they may even splurge and go like ten grand compared to like the. Fifty thou or more that it probably would have cost if it was in great condition, and you know they didn't have to clean up all that stuff. Yeah, because you know in the future, you know, oh, I give you ten for this property and this house, and I knock it down, and I buy your neighbors in that too, and then they build whatever they want on there. They're gonna make that back yeah. in no time. So, and the other thing too, I wanted to touch on was 
what if this is happening on purpose? I'm not saying it is happening on purpose, but, but the ideas and the conspiracy, and I'm putting it air quotes with my fingies, um, what if they're like, what if they're doing this on purpose to say that it's, and then they're going to come out later and be like, oh, these were attacks. These were terrorist attacks that happened. These were the oh. things that caused it. These people booby trapped these things. This is what happened. So it's like that's bullshit. I know, but what if they start doing that? No, you don't, that's what. So the other thing too is, there's a company called BlackRock that goes in and buys all these properties. They're funded by taxpayer dollars, and they're ta- uh, they're funded by like investments and in- mm-hmm. investing and stuff like that. And so I'll give you an example with the George Floyd riots uh-huh. up in in Wisconsin or Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Yeah, Kenosha, Wisconsin, I think, over that area. Okay. They they rioted and they destroyed a bunch of stuff, right? And that happens in riots. Um, they destroyed Target, a big uh, money maker for the city. Like people had plenty of there was plenty of jobs from that one place. They tore down or destroyed uh, Auto Zones, you know, like a bunch of different buildings and different businesses that got destroyed. Yeah, these businesses then say, hey, we're going to take the insurance money and we are not going to rebuild. We're going to leave. So now you have all this empty property. All these jobs are gone. you know. And then what's going to happen is BlackRock's going to come in and go, what are you guys going to do with all this property? Nobody's coming in because they don't want to, they don't want to, they don't want to put money into an area that doesn't even want them there. Yeah. So they're going to tear down the buildings and they're going to put 15 minute cities. They're going to create a bunch of high rise apartments. And and they're gonna sell it as, well, we're bringing jobs back to America. We're bringing jobs here. You know, we're bringing jobs. We're creating new jobs, which is gonna be creating new jobs for a few years until they build all these cities up. Yeah. But then once the cities are up and done, they're gonna make everything where it's AI. They're gonna make cameras everywhere. If if you're gonna be on a um, uh, social credit score. Okay. So say for example, you you jaywalk, it's gonna see your face. It's going to charge your account right away, and you're going to go to try to buy food, and it'll be like, well, you jaywalk. Insufficient funds. Yeah, insufficient funds. Or say you go, hey, I want to work out. I want to get in shape. They go, you've been to the gym too much this week. And then you go to get some healthy food, and they go, well, you're a little too healthy, so the only option you're going to have to eat is McDonald's. And then you got to go eat McDonald's. You know, or I'm just spitball i'm like yeah. uh, this could be the worst the worst like craziest thing ever yeah but i think what's going to happen is these areas down there there's i mean for, you said 4700 people down there pretty much in east palestine yeah it's like they could easily blackrock could they get trillions of dollars they yeah. could buy these people out they'll be like we'll give you a million dollars to relocate you know then you got 4700 million dollar people like i don't know if you could do the math real quick um but like is it okay to use this one? Yeah. Um, if if you did forty seven hundred times a million, even if it was like a hundred thousand or something, uh, four billion seven hundred million. Yeah, I mean, like we're we're already asking the government, like we're already trillions of dollars in debt. A billion dollars is nothing to them now. Yeah. Now to like just to touch on this, like I know I've talked to you guys specifically about it, but just to just to explain seconds for example mm-hmm. like a million seconds is do you know how many days that makes up a million uh, seconds not offhand 11 days 11 days do you know how much a billion seconds is 20 days? 31 years 31 years okay so just a million to a billion is such a huge difference right yes and then you got a trillion a trillion you know how many seconds a trillion makes up how many years that makes up? I'm gonna over a century. Thirty-one thousand seven hundred and ten years. <laughs> um, so, so three millennia. Yes. So I mean, like, if and like, not to jump too far back or anything like that, but like, if you were to go back in time a, a one million seconds, you would go back eleven days. Okay. If you went back a billion seconds, you'd be in like nineteen ninety or nineteen ninety one. Okay. And then if you want to go back a trillion seconds back in time, you would be going back to 28,000 BC 
back when the original humanoids were around, you know, the people that made fire, or even before them, you know. It might have been when the Anunnaki were helping people to, to make pyramids and showing them okay. how to mine for gold. <laughs> I don't know if I want to go back yeah. that far. <laughs> and, but, but then just the, that's the idea of seconds. Now, if you were to get a million, a million dollars, you could have it on your, you could have it like uh, in, let's just say, in $1 bills, right? Yeah. A million, you would have like a briefcase from like like a two by two briefcase or something, or a two by three briefcase. And then it would be probably like another two feet off the ground, like, or three feet off the ground. That's a million dollars right there. Yeah. A billion dollars would be like, I think like a hundred of those on a pallet that would take up even more space. So imagine like a big pallet. I was going to say like a pallet you would see out of like a store when they're getting new product. Yeah. Like Home Depot or something. Or like if you ever gone and like worked at a warehouse or like gone to like a furniture store and seen like one of those things. Yeah. And then you have it about like five feet high, almost as tall as like me. Okay. (laughs) Because you're taller than me. So I was trying to say, you guys suck. Um, You got that on and off you. Yeah. But then they showed a trillion dollars. And a trillion dollars is even bigger. Like, it's it's almost the size of, like, a building. Mm-hmm. You know, so, like, a billion dollars to them is nothing. They have they've might have already put a billion dollars in funding, you know, in the, like, the government. So then that way... Uh, the train company, Norfolk and Southern, uh-huh. um, paid out more than $2.2 million in direct financial assistance to more than 1,530 families. Oh, wow. And that's just for, that's a reimbursement for lodging, travel, food, clothes, and other related items. And that's just for East Palestine? Yeah, and then they also, local residents say the freight carrier is offering anyone with the East Palestine zip code of 44413 uh-huh. without a $1,000 check. Oh, wow. It, that's referring to the payments as an inconvenience fee which will not bar residents from bringing suit against the railway company in in the future. Okay. Does it mention if any of those other train wrecks uh, had people get settlements for any, you know, inconveniences? <laughs> yeah. It's true. I, don't, I, yeah, I haven't found that yet. Okay. Like, this is worse than BP, I think. Yeah, but at least that was We're all sorry. in one area. That was like, it was one spot in the ocean. Yeah. Well, We're here, sorry. We have East Palestine. Say it. He said bizarre. What'd you say? Well, mm, remember the South Park episode? No. On the BP still. Oh, that would have been what, 05? Yeah. He's just like, we're sorry. Oh, yeah. Every time they got on the BP, he was we're on the really news, sorry. He did. And anyway. that's all he would say. Hmm. But yeah, think about it. We have East Palestine. I think there was like one in, two in California, one in Texas. And there was like one in another state. I just can't remember what it was. I think Detroit. There was a there was a semi crash on I ten in Arizona, in yeah. Tucson, and then there was a bunch of uh, buildings and stuff too, like these plants, like that stuff that you said that was getting made, the uh, vinyl chloride. Yeah, this guy said like he was he was a part of like a hazmat team, and hazmat part of the production for his company. And he said these higher ups, we want when we want you guys to pump out ten times more than, um. The recommended like allowance for you guys to have in this building. Okay. And he said, so after we pumped out ten times the amount, we went home that day and our building caught on fire and mm-hmm. destroyed it all. Holy shit! So it's like that's where it starts to wonder, like, <clears throat> is this stuff done on purpose? Well, it's funny because there's one. There was uh, there's like three other chemicals on there too. Okay. Well, well you, I mean, you need a higher education than me than to pronounce this shit. <laughs> <laughs> Spell it, please. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> But, like, there was the one near us. They say it was, like, a boiler that exploded. Oh, yeah. What, you were like, did you feel that? And I was yeah. like, yeah, I felt that. I, they, didn't even, I forgot all about that. They said it was, like, the, it didn't catch on fire or anything in the building, but a boiler exploded. Yes. But I'm like, how big is this boiler, and where was it at that it exploded inside that factory? And you felt it, like, four cities away. Exactly. We don't have to mention where oh. we live. <laughs> My bad. <laughs> oh, we have to speak in code. <laughs> Behind... Yeah, yeah, behind McDonald's with the Neil Armstrong uh, thing. Uh, no. <laughs> Telecom, Wakanda, <laughs> Asgard. <laughs> but yeah, we, we, we like there were people from various cities mm-hmm. calling each other. Athens, yeah. Greece. <laughs> exactly. Um. <laughs> so you, you would have think Jack chopped down the beanstalk. 
the way, and then there were people I know that live like literally behind the factory thought an earthquake was happening. Yeah, I wonder if the window bad. shook real bad too, or yes. like broke they, out. I was told that stuff fell off the shelves, windows shook. They literally thought an earthquake was happening. Yeah, because of how close they were to it. And then there was not even to jump too crazy, but um, the embassy in Turkey. There was a bunch of countries that pulled out their people out of the embassy in, in Turkey. And then all of a sudden, two days later, they had an enormous earthquake. Yeah. And and they're like, hmm. they don't change. They don't create this stuff. They don't. They don't know when this stuff's gonna happen. How are you gonna? You can't predict an earthquake unless you know it's gonna happen, right? They do have machinery that allows them to. Come on, this is a conspiracy episode. Those machines are Project created for them. I was gonna say I don't know if it allows them to predict, but it allows them to gauge the size. Yeah, I'm not saying they haven't advanced far enough to predict and won't tell us. Predictor or, or, <laughs> or, or in a case, cause. Yeah. I mean, if we're if we're studying what causes earthquakes and what measures we can go to to protect our homes and houses from earthquakes, that also means we have to destroy things. So mm-hmm. that doesn't. Who knows? They may have made a small scale one to you know see the effects and yep. built like a model town to see the effects. And someone goes, "Let's make that bigger." Yeah. It becomes a weapon that, you know, is occasionally used. And and I was talking to uh Killy from our Black Holes episode and uh he even mentioned like he he's he's skeptic. He's somebody that we work with that's like you could show him the proof and he's like, There's no way. There's oh, no way. Why why would they do that? And he goes, I don't care what you tell me, there's no way that I'll believe that they can control the weather. And I was like he goes, What would be the purpose of them controlling the weather? And I was like, To make money. And I was like, to, to cause chaos, I, I'm like, for example, you don't need hurricane insurance where we live, but if all of a sudden there's a hurricane that's about to hit over here, and it starts for some reason coming more and more closer to where we live, yeah. we might have to need hurricane insurance. And and he goes, yeah, but why would they why would they do that to their, their own people? And I'm like, you're, you're thinking that they care about you. Like <laughs> oh, that's that's your man. that's your biggest. Now, I'm gonna tell you this. Like anybody that ever questions, like a conspiracy theorist or somebody that it's not a conspiracy theorist when you're proven factual stuff, they just don't ever come out and say, "Hey, this stuff came true, and now it's not a conspiracy. It's a conspiracy fact. Yeah. It's not a theory anymore. It's considered a fact. A conspiracy is when people come together to try to to." So like, the truth. No, 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 no. A conspiracy is when people tr- work together to to destroy something else. You know. I thought that was a revolution. No, it would be like with Kennedy, John F. Kennedy. The, it's the word, not not a revolution. Oh yeah, but the <laughs> the word or the word Kennedy, the uh, JFK, John F. Kennedy, when he was killed, that's when the word conspiracy became a thing. Because people started questioning the narrative. They started yeah. questioning, is this real? Did that really happen? Did they try well, to kill him themselves? That's what I'm saying. Like You said conspiracy is people coming together to destroy. It's people coming together to, that's what I said, find the truth. No, I'm not saying that at all. I'm saying if there's a conspiracy, it means that people came together to create that problem. And oh, people don't believe it. Gotcha. So then okay. they're considered conspiracy theorists. Because they're like, oh, you're just a conspiracy theorist because they just want to like disregard them and be like, your opinions doesn't matter. Like what you're talking about, there's no way the government would do that. The government loves us. So they created the word conspiracy to put it as like a bad connotation towards like normal people that question the narrative. Uh-huh. That's what I'm getting at. Sorry, gotcha. I'm like not trying to get all hyper, but <clears throat> it's too late. Yeah. So anyway, when we when, don't get hype, yeah. we stay hype. But if you if you told somebody today JFK was killed by the CIA and FBI, they'd be like, "Well, yeah, duh." But they're not changing the idea that that's still categorized as being a conspiracy. And you're a conspiracy theorist if you believe it. They're not going to come out and say that's a fact. And then the media comes out and goes, "That's no longer a conspiracy. It's been proven true." Mm. So that's what I'm saying with all these things, like uh, like the weather and all that stuff, like. The government like caring about you. That's the biggest conspiracy. The government comes together to not care about you. Like they're not going out there and helping anybody at all. I can't say the whole government. I can say a majority of the government is that way. Yeah, I think there are a lot of rats in the sewers. 
But are, are, are we talking Master Splinter rats that are on our side, or we're we talking about the rats of the majority causing the, the, the strife king. and the chaos? The Rat King. Definitely not. <laughs> right. The oh. Master Splinter. Yeah. And the, the yeah. Rat King and the Sugar Plum Fairies? Yes. Okay. <laughs> oh, yeah. The Rat King was from the Ninja Turtles. No, that was from the Nutcracker. No, the Rat King was also... He he had like he looked like a zon- he looked like a uh, mummy. I don't remember that. Yeah, you have to we'll have to Google it. <laughs> but yeah, the Rat King's a real person. That's why they call Theo von the Rat King. I thought it was because of the mullet. No, that's not. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, sorry to go on a random tangent, taking this episode along. Thought for the day. Fill your mind with truth, your heart with love, your life with service. You guys just listened to episode 7 part 1. Hope you guys enjoyed the show. Uh, Chante the homie usually says deuce. TBD usually makes a bedtime rhyme. And uh, I'm going to just say stay safe and stay blessed and, uh, and hope you enjoyed the show and hopefully you'll like the next one.